Whether manufacturers like it or not, it's a different world out there. One where handset makers are increasingly pressured to take the growing price conscious segment of the market more seriously than ever. Sony seems aware of that and the Xperia C is the logical next step in its playbook. This dual SIM 5 venture is priced competitively and is aimed at the large crowd in Asian markets and elsewhere where demand for big screen devices on a budget is pretty massive. Before we jump right into this one, we'll admit that the Xperia C is technically not the most affordable solution out there. But with extra such as Sony's brand cache, along with its proprietary software and attractive design, it may just be enough to tip the scales in favor of the phone. This is Chris with Phone Arena and it's time we take a look. Much alike to most any other contemporary Sony phone, the Xperia C pays homage to its omnibalanced design roots, inheriting both the good and the bad. Said otherwise, you are getting the typical rectangular slab, though the Japanese company does know a thing or two about making these look great. Unfortunately, Sony's signature thick bezels are also present, so the device is quite large, but curiously still smaller than the Xperia Z1. The front of the phone houses the standard, a near piece in the top middle, with the front facing camera and ambient light sensor hugging the top right portion. At the bottom, you will find the somewhat unconventional speaker like encasing for the microphone and the very minimalistic notification LED light as described as a strip. Taking a look at the back, it's definitely the better looking half with its matte plastic finish. It has a barely noticeable hump at the bottom, which helps for sound to not get muffled when coming out of the rear speaker. Lastly, all hardware buttons have taken a resonance on the right profile of the device and they all have a great feedback to them. The display on the Sony Xperia C is likely to cause some soul searching for the pixel nuts among you. You are getting an admittedly underwhelming 5 inch 540x960 LCD panel or a pixel density of about 220 ppi. This is a long way from a 1080p panel of course, but do keep in mind that you are buying into a budget solution, so you simply have to compromise. All said, the display is actually of decent quality and offers an overall proper color reproduction. Unfortunately, there is a very detectable sign tint to it and viewing angles are just poor. However, perhaps the biggest disappointment with this screen is the complete lack of any protective coating, so you better gear up. As with any other Xperia phone, you're looking at a Sony skin on top of Android 4.22 Jelly Bean. We're usually not very fond of manufacturer customizations, though Sony's take is actually one of the better. It's minimal, to the point and considerably lighter on the hardware than some rival solutions. There is no perceptible slowing down when navigating the UI and the phone feels buttery smooth for the most part. The notification and multitask menus are also well made. The former offers access to quick toggles like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, sound profiles and best of all, easy and quick switching between your two SIM cards. Looking at the multitask menu, you get a bird's view of all the apps running in the background along with quick access to what Sony is calling small apps. These work exactly as advertised as they allow you to open a scalable miniature version of an app that won't take over your entire screen. These can, in some scenarios, help your productivity. Overall, the Android experience on the Xperia C is definitely to our taste and we actually like the finer touches such as the extensive choice of color themes, the built-in track ID song recognition feature and so on and so forth. The dual SIM capabilities of the Xperia C exhibit some of the typical limitations. The silicone inside only allows for dual standby, so you'll be offline on your secondary SIM during ongoing calls. Sony has actually tried to do something about this problem, yet the best they can offer is to forward the calls to your other SIM card when you're unreachable. Sadly, this usually means additional expenses with your carrier. Before we move on, it's also important that you keep in mind that while the first lot offers 3G speeds of up to 42 megabits, you're stuck with 2G GSM connectivity on the second. The Sony Xperia C is a budget device, so you can imagine the shortcuts were taken. One such is the appropriation of a MediaTek chipset instead of taking a pick from Qualcomm's selection. However, the quad-core chip inside actually does a decent job, especially since it only has to move so many pixels. This however is not the most powerful quad-core MediaTek chip out there and it belongs to the now older 2012 crop of processors. But plainly, this is not a gamer's rig as the PowerVR GPU is only clocked at 286 MHz, meaning that mid-tire and above gaming titles will prove a bit too heavy. Unfortunately, it's not champagne and rolls in the memory department either. RAM is acceptable at 1GB, but the 2GB of leftover native storage leave little room for anything. In fact, in order to actually download a medium-sized game like Minion Rush, we had to first go through our media storage for a sweep. All in all, this simply leaves you no choice but to invest into a microSD card and make use of that slot at the back. Luckily for you, Sony has delivered and the feature to install apps onto your SD card is baked into the software just as it should. 
Chrome is what you get out of the box with this Sony device and the surfing experience is actually pretty decent overall. As we like to point out, even lower end MediaTek chips get away with an ok browsing experience mostly thanks to the fact that objects and text are not fully rendered unless you zoom in. The chip coming underneath the screen ensures that both scrolling and zooming are responsive enough even for the more exacting folks, so no complaints there. And yet, browsing is hardly all there is to a smartphone nowadays and to that end we're glad to see that the Sony Xperia C is a wonderfully connected device. It offers Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi Direct and a well-working GPS. Ease of use in the camera interface department is something that Sony has definitely gotten right. Apart from the dedicated two-step camera button on the right side of the phone, you're also getting an interface that's minimalistic, intuitive and just easy to navigate. This is impressive as the software is actually packed with features and settings. The Xperia C sports an 8 megapixel shooter with an Exmor R sensor and an LED flash. The snapper performs admirably, but it's obviously not flawless. So while color fidelity is to standard, one could say the details are a shade too low, not to mention that blurry images are sometimes hard to avoid. HDR is definitely of help, as the dynamic range is also not too impressive. As is to be expected, when the lights go down, so does the overall image quality. That said, the flash on the Xperia C does a pretty good job of illuminating the scene and we were happy to see that photo quality degradation was not as shocking as with other devices. Video capture at 1080p is also available, though the footage is perceptibly dark. Continuous out of focus can also be a bit lazy, refusing to refocus unless the object is massively in the way. Whatever pertains to the multimedia category, we found it to be sufficient and up to standard with this phone. The chip inside handled any video encoding we could think of, including some rare ones, and powered through even 1080p clips with finesse. Moreover, and as per usual, Sony gets top marks on the built-in gallery and video player, as these are stylish, easy to use and functional. The speaker, as we said earlier, is placed on a hump at the rear, so sound doesn't get muffled almost at all, even when the phone is lying on its back. We found its volume levels to be lacking a bit, but we were generally content with audio fidelity. In terms of call quality, we were pleasantly surprised by this phone, as calls were clear, loud and realistic. Better still, this actually held true for both sides. If you're looking for that extra bit of audio clarity though, you could activate Sony's clear face feature, which essentially tones down volume in exchange for quality. That being said, we can't say that we saw a stark improvement. All we know, the Xperia C hits the nail on the head in this particular department, just as every phone should. Battery life on the Xperia C is pretty awesome and that's for three main reasons. Two of these include the QHD resolution screen which is relatively light on the processor, which in turn is pretty frugal with power consumption thanks to its efficient Cortex-A7 cores. And lastly, the non-removable 2390mAh cell may not be the biggest you've heard of, yet it's proven to be pretty large for the needs of the Xperia C. In other words, expect two days of usage on a single charge, so long as you go easy on the brightness of course. We've always stood firmly behind the idea that any smartphone should be viewed as a package and not just as the hardware inside. This is especially true for budget-friendly devices like the Xperia C, as no manufacturer has managed to offer an affordable, no compromise device just yet. But we must be getting closer, as even Sony, with its traditionally expensive products, is now rising to the challenge. Of course, considering that the Xperia C was created with Asia, the Middle East and Africa in mind, we do have to know that its price of about 230 bucks is on the higher end of the budget spectrum. This means that local superstars like Xiaomi, Lenovo and ZTE have some of their phones going for even less. All said, you still get an all-round great bundle with the Xperia C and one worthy of bearing the Sony logo on its back. So in conclusion, we actually enjoyed fondling with the Xperia C, and that speaks volumes on its own. Individual things like the display could have been better, yet at the end of the day, they felt perfectly adequate. Once again, this was Chris with Phone Arena, thank you for tuning in.